Okay, so let's let's break that down because I heard like two really juicy examples. So let's just talk about, so like I see as a coach too, I see a, one of the big categories, like you said, is the fear of the unknown, right? And it's the fear, sometimes that fear of the unknown is so great that people actually don't make decisions. They just stick in a certain place because right. they're just afraid to make any movement. And, and you know, it's actually trying to map that to, you know, typical life transitions. You either have a new baby, you're moving to a new place, you know, you're, those kinds of things where you're doing something new for you're applying to college there are like right. new things in which you're not really sure what's going on because mm-hmm. it's the very first time you've done it and so in that in, in that vein you have actually a great exercise in your book and I was wondering if you could step us through it was called the choosing which path to take mm-hmm. could you kind of, kind of yeah. can you kind of take us through like so in that one category of things okay. making a decision okay. what would you what would the questions you'd want to ask yourself or mindset you want to adopt and then how would you use this exercise well well it's tricky because two of the things you mentioned are in the parenting category okay and one of them was moving so you know first i would have to separate it out because the parenting category like we spoke about earlier yeah it, it's 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 why it's so difficult is that the buddha said what all desire leads to attachment all attachment leads to suffering mm-hmm. i have yet to meet a parent that is not attached to their child Mm-hmm. And that itself is a conundrum, right? Because right. we need them to be okay. And we know that life has twists and turns. And the minute we need something to be a certain way, we're going to suffer. Right. But over time, what I realized that, yes, we are attached. Most of us are attached to our children. But part of the suffering is not from the attachment. Part of the suffering is our inability to deal with the unknown. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that's really interesting that, okay, if I can lighten up with my relationship with uncertainty, I could suffer less as a parent. Mm. So all of a sudden, you know, you, you um, we could use the, the example of a child ap- applying to college. college right. Well, the thing that the story that we tell is if my child does not get into a good college, they're not going to get a good job. They're not going to have a good life. They're not going to meet. So you could go on and on and on right. and on. And there's a lot of evidence out there to support that. But with this idea of maybe you recognize, well, maybe that thought's not true. And maybe it's okay if my child doesn't go to an Ivy League college. And maybe they're meant to go to a different college that they got into. And maybe they'll be okay no matter what. And maybe this all doesn't matter that much. And and you just kind of release yourself from that one linear thought that's driving you nuts. Because what you're saying is, if this doesn't happen, my child's not going to be okay. Right. And then you recognize, well, maybe that thought's not true. Maybe they will be okay. Maybe something else will happen. So all of a sudden, you're constantly letting go of your fear of the unknown. And as you're letting go you're willing to hang out there. And the more you're willing to hang out in the unknown, the more spacious you are, the more open you are, and the more of a, an ability you're going to have to make the be- help your child make the best decision for their, for their life. Because again, it's not a fear-based decision because you're not in fear. You're actually more in faith. And what's so interesting about maybe is I used to call it a cognitive faith. I mean, faith ultimately is I'm okay with whatever happens in life. Right. And as you meet people, some people have faith because of their belief in God, and some people are just okay with whatever happens. But most of us, we struggle with the unknown, so we're not in faith. So what maybe is, it's kind of like a bridge from belief to faith. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like we're able to kind of live life with more faith just because we're willing to say, maybe everything is okay. And the more you're hanging out in that unknown, and the more you're in maybe, you're going to cultivate more faith in your life. And I'm a true believer, when you cultivate more faith, you are acting from your wisdom and you're more relaxed about life. You're suffering less. So when your child comes to you and says, hey, listen, I'm really worried about school. I'm really worried. I'm not going to get into a good college. You're not going to get all hooked because you're recognizing, okay, we don't know what's going to happen, but not knowing doesn't mean it's going to be bad. And mm. you're not getting into this exact college we thought we were going to Maybe everything is still okay. So all of a sudden you're both hanging out in this open space. Life is more flowing. Life is more fluid. And then when the right college comes along, you know it. You know it because you're hanging out in this open space and it just feels right. So to me, like in the parenting category, that's a better way to go about it is to kind of deal with this this idea of uncertainty in a different way. And there's actually a chapter, um, an exercise in the first chapter of the book where I actually ask people to write down your biggest fear. So let's say your biggest fear was my child's not going to get into a good college. Mm -hmm. My child's not going to get into any college. And you ask yourself, am I absolutely sure that, that, am I absolutely sure that thought's true? And no, we're never sure. And then you start writing the maybe statements down. You write them really broad. Maybe everything's okay. Maybe this is good. What's happening? Uh, Maybe they weren't supposed to get into that college. Maybe they need to, you know, study harder. Off, you know, who knows? 
Uh, maybe they're supposed to study harder on the standardized test. Maybe in this moment, we are not going to know the answer. And maybe everything is still okay. So all of a sudden, you just the 20 minutes of that, I can almost guarantee you're going to be less stressed. You're going to be less worried. And the minute that happens, you sink right into the present. And then you're open. And then you know. And then your child knows. And then there's the flow of life. So for, for situations like that, and again, even if you have a new baby, and again, it's like you can, you can go crazy. My baby's not breastfeeding right. She's not walking. She's not talking. We start to write all these stories because it's not happening the way we thought it was supposed to happen. But when we start to engage and maybe we're less worried, we're less fearful. And then also, also really important, we're not passing it on to our children. Mm, okay, so we get so we write the maybe, we write down all the possible things that it could be aside from the, the you know, fixed way of thinking about in our head. Okay, so this is literally a, a issue that my girlfriend faced. Um, she was very worried. She said, my, hus- my son got into Stanford, Princeton, University of Washington, and, mm-hmm. and she wasn't sure what to do, right? She said, I don't know what to do. You know, he really would like to go to Stanford, but then I also wonder if he's rowing crew, if that's just too stressful for him. And, okay, so she's facing these, this decision among Mm -hmm. these three different choices Mm -hmm. so what would you how would you how would you approach that from a place of openness and possibility and make a decision on what college would be best for her um or or, or, you know in that case it's like oh gosh you know poor you you have to go to stanford or princeton you know (laughs) or let's just say like maybe that's too obnoxious but let's say that you could either like take a year off go to community college go to a state school which you're hoping you get into but you don't know if you're going to get into or go to the dream school that you hope you get into but it's a stretch right like this is more more realistic right these are like five options decisions so what would you do with that information (laughs) Well, it's interesting. The first thing I would do was, was bring the client to a place of gratitude to calm it down a little bit. What happens sometimes is we get so hysterical right. because of the way we think life needs to be that we forget. It's almost like I always tell the example. It's like going into a kitchen and seeing in the sink there are dirty dishes. Yes. And we're like, oh, my God, my, my kitchen is so dirty. But go open all the cabinets and see all your clean dishes. Most of your dishes are clean. <laughs> so, right? right. So the first so the first thing I would do calm is, down. <laughs> right, we have to calm down because what's happened is we're so edgy that mm-hmm. we, that life's not working out. We're so edgy that this moment is the only moment, and we're doomed. And we forget all the beautiful, wonderful things that are happening in our life. And we, if we, you know, first I would actually say, like, what a great opportunity for your child to go to college. What a what an amazing what a, you're so lucky that you have all these beautiful choices to make. Your child has all these beautiful choices to make. And you know, sometimes it'll calm somebody down and sometimes someone's gonna keep telling me the story. Yeah. No, it's I'm going like, like, yeah, yeah, okay, what what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> and even you know, and even with the with the um, example with, with the woman whose child got, you know, into all to these great colleges. So first, you know, you come to a, a place of gratitude. And second, you know, with maybe we recognize that if you make a decision, you're not doomed. And that's why your, your friend is so hooked. Your friend's so hooked because your friend's like, well, if he goes to Princeton and he made the right de- wrong decision and he didn't go to say, well, okay, you know, if you go to Princeton and it ends up not being the best school or you end up taking a year off or you end up, life has maybe after that. That's the thing. What happens, we think that we have yeah. a decision and if we don't make the right decision, then we're going to be doomed. But we forget that life has maybe after that. Like mm. I had a, a situation with a client where her child was going to go, was at a public high school. Mm -hmm. And she was thinking about sending her son to a private school in in Manhattan. And they chose the private school. And my friend was very influential in her son choosing the school. And now he's stressed. And now, you know, he doesn't sleep at night. And he has Mm -hmm. all this work. And and she's blaming herself. And he's not going to get into a college now. First of all, we don't know it was the wrong decision. That's an interesting thing, too, because the story of regret, what I love about the story of regret is people come into my office and they always tell me about the mistake that they made. But we have no idea. Like, for all my friend knows, he needed to leave that public high school. We have no idea he could have been at the wrong place at the wrong time. He could have hurt himself in, in a game. We don't know. But the thing is, the fact that we never experienced it, we tell the story of regret that it was so, it's so, what a beautiful thing it would have been had we not if we yeah. made that decision. I shouldn't have feared with my son he should you yeah. know I made up man now his life is miserable it's all my fault right right, right. and all we know is that here we are with this right. moment, hope and possibility that from this day forth life could be beautiful life could be wonderful so even with my friend and with your friend like yeah if you make the wrong decision life still has maybe and then all of a sudden all the drama 
all the, the pressure, it's just lifted because we recognize no matter what happens, we're not stuck, we're not doomed. And that's the key. You're mm. not stuck, you're not doomed, life has maybe. So you sit down, you, you're not so hooked, you're in gratitude, you realize that you're not doomed, you look at the four schools or you look at your choices and you see how they make you feel. And yes, mm. there's this exercise about the visualization in, in my book where you can hang out in these different choices and see what comes up for you. You could make a list and write down what every school offers. But the fact that you know no matter what choice you make, after you make that decision, life still has maybe, that's where you're going to feel more free. Because if you make a mistake, so what? You know, life will open up again. Do we want to make the best decision? Of course we do. But we're so afraid of making the mistake that we're going to make the decision based on fear. If you're so afraid when you're making that decision, you're going to go to the school that has the biggest bells and whistles, that has the best outer reputation. But maybe that's not the best school for your child. So uh, I see. it's really tricky. But with maybe you're, you're not afraid. So you're making the decisions from a better place because you realize no matter what happens, maybe this is good. Maybe it'll get better. But most of all, maybe I will still be okay no matter what decision I make. <gasps> all of a sudden you can relax on decision and everything starts to shift. So maybe just allows you to keep on hooking from all that fear, all that worry. We're less hysterical and we're living life from a larger perspective. Mm. So friend, your friend has, should have, could start with gratitude and then could start looking at life with more maybe and realizing that even when you make a decision, even if it wasn't for the best, she'll never know. Interestingly, she'll never know if she made a mistake. Right. We never know. Right. All we know is that life takes us from one place to another. And, and I even have a story. Remember, I had this uh, woman working for me, and she went to a psychic. Mm -hmm. Oh, and gosh. Psychics are always great, right? Because they always tell you I what I love psychics, get. yes. And the psychic, you know, she wanted to, you know, move on. She wanted to leave her job. And she actually wanted to go back to the – she lived outside. She moved from outside the country. She lived actually in the Caribbean. And she wanted to go back there. And the psychic said, don't go back there. If you go back there, you're going to be unhappy. You're going to be miserable. You're going to feel poor. You're not going to have work. And I remember my employee came back and she was really startled because she really believed that this woman who, who knew, who would give her certainty, right. really knew what was going to happen next. And But she was suffering so much, she really wanted to go. And so she decided to go and she went to, she moved back to the Caribbean and it was stressful. And she didn't have work. And she did live in Pipe, but she, she at least left New York. She wasn't happy in New York. And she lived like this for six months. But after those six months, she met somebody who convinced her that she should move to Atlanta, Georgia. So she moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And all of a sudden, she finished getting her college degree. And now today, she's a teacher. And she's happy with what she does every day. She has a great life. She met this great guy. So yes, for those six months, that psychic was able to, to, you know, to say, don't do that. But that was a stepping stone. That move was a stepping stone for her to end up in Atlanta. So right. and had she not I, gone to the Caribbean and suffered those things, she would have never gone to right. Atlanta so and that, be happy. And, yeah, we're uh, telling those stories. So if, she, your, your child, if you go to community college and it ends up you should have taken a year off or you should have went to... All we know is that if you're in maybe, you're constantly going to be opening up again and again and again, and you will not be stuck in life. And when you live life with more hope and more possibility and with more maybe, you're going to keep making new decisions. And eventually, I have to say, you're going to find your way. But if you're always shutting down, you're always living in regret, you're always telling the story, I made a wrong decision. This things are not working out. This is the worst thing I could have ever done. Then you're going to have a painful experience and you might not push forward. I, if I have clients who are not in maybe, sometimes they need to keep going and they shut down. Or sometimes they need to sh shut down they keep going because everything is based on fear. But with maybe it's not like that. With mm -hmm. maybe you're in an open space, you're hopeful, you're seeing possibilities, you're less hysterical, and life keeps shifting. Mm -hmm. So again, we have to be really careful with the stories that we tell in life. Yeah. Oh, wait.